In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to this service, uh, which we will see out of the old year, and welcome in the new. I thought that this year perhaps we needed to do that this more than normal. Um, so, welcome to you. We come together not with large public celebrations of years past, but with whispered rumours of hope and anticipation of all that the year ahead may bring. We come together, united by prayer and the love of Christ that has been woven through our being and holds us tightly forever. We come together to remember all that has grieved us all that has brought us joy and to pray for the year ahead. Amen. Let us pray. The light dwindles into the darkness of winter. It seems so fragile, but the dark gathers it, keeps it safe, helps it to shine. The life dwindles into the darkness of the earth. It seems to be lost, but the dark treasures it, keeps it rooted, helps it to rebirth. The divine dwindles into the darkness of the womb. It seems impossible, but the dark nurtures it and the Christ is born in each of us. When the dark threatens us, when the light dazzles us, when life overwhelms us, we remember God is with us in the gentleness of the dark, the inspiration of the light, and the courage to be who we are.
Psalm 90 Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the earth and the world were formed, from everlasting to everlasting you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, which passes like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid at your wrathful indignation. You have set our misdeeds before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are threescore years and ten, or if our strength endures, even fourscore. Yet the sum of them is but labour and sorrow, for they soon pass away and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? and your indignation like those who fear you. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Turn again, O Lord. How long will you delay? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Give us gladness for the days you have afflicted us, and for the years in which we have seen adversity. Show your servants your works, and let your glory be over their children. May the gracious favour of the Lord our God be upon <clears throat> us. Prosper our handiwork, O oh, prosper the work of our hands. Glory, glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and shall be forever. Amen. The reading is taken from St Paul's Epistle to the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word and deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my lips and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. One of the favourite games that uh, my parents always got us to play at parties when I was a child was one where there was a, a massive bar of chocolate. Well, it was massive to me as a five-year-old some dressing up clothes, and a die, a dice. If you rolled a six, you have to put on a random collection of clothes and attempt to cut a piece of chocolate with a knife and fork. But you had to do all this before one of the other players in the circle rolled a six. By all means, play this after the service. 
But for now, let's just use our imaginations. Obviously, the prize in the game is the chocolate. That's what you're looking forward to getting hold of when you play. Well, that's what I used to look forward to getting hold of when I played. But depending on how quickly the sixes are rolled, you could end up playing the whole game without getting any chocolate at all. So, what tactics could you employ to try to get to that rich, chocolatey goal? I'm sounding like the Vicar of Dibley here, aren't I? So, I can think of three tactics. Firstly, don't put the clothes on. Head straight for the chocolate. But of course, that's cheating. I don't think the other players would like you very much and it also means that you're not playing the game properly. Clothes are pretty much compulsory. They're compulsory in our society, but of course, you all know that. In the Bible passage that Judy read for us, St. Paul says we are to clothe ourselves in compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. And above all, we are to clothe ourselves in love. Because that binds everything together in perfect harmony. Personally, for me, in order for the society to function, these are not optional. And as we come to the end of a difficult year and head into the unknown, we need to make sure that these are put on day by day, along with our underpants and our wellies. But I've got to admit, sometimes it's hard to put them on. There are times when it's hard to show kindness when someone has hurt you, or humility when you just know that you are right, or patience when you have been homeschooling the children or attending the 10th Zoom meeting of the week. Sometimes you've been doing both. But compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience are not optional. And if we put them on, we will get the chocolate. Well, perhaps not always chocolate. People around you will appreciate you and you will be blessed. And they will be blessed by you. So, that first tactic in the game should not be allowed. You've got to put the clothes on. A second tactic would be to stretch the clothes so they're easier to put on. Now, I think they should be allowed. Clothes need to fit you. And as each of us moves into the future, we have to grow, maybe not as much outward as some of us have grown during the lockdown, but we do need to grow. We are all very different to the people we were before this pandemic started. We have all grown in some way. We probably all behave differently. We hadn't even heard of social distancing a year ago. How many thought that the word pandemic would be on your lips? What was COVID-19 then? Wearing masks? We have all changed, we have all grown throughout this past year. Our Bible passage tells us to bear with one another. I think this means stretching a little for the sake of the other. Our society continually grows and changes. We all need to adapt to listen to each other as new ideas come along. I think that it is definitely something that this year has taught us, how some people listen, how others don't. Finally, a third tactic in the game is to get help. Now, in the game, it might be frowned upon if you got the person next to you to help you cut up the chocolate 
or to help you get dressed. But in our society and in our communities, it is certainly allowed. As a church, as Christians, it's our duty to reach out and help others. Of course, there is someone else to help too, and that is worth remembering as we leave 2020 behind and step into 2021. Our God, who became incarnate, stepped into our world, dwelt among us, is a God who walks alongside us throughout the good times and those not so good times. God was with us throughout 2020 and will be with us during 2021. Today, God's love surrounds and upholds each one of us. We just have to ask for it and to let God help. So as we enter 2021, every day, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience, and tie them together with love. Remember, clothes are not optional in our everyday working lives, and these spiritual clothes are not optional either. Bear with one another as we each change and grow. Stretch and try to fit one another. And don't forget to ask for help. With the help of our friends and family and God, we are sure to reach a prize in our everyday lives, which is way better than chocolate. And remember the words that George V used in his first Christmas message at the beginning of the war. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. So I went forth and finding the hand of God, trod gladly into the night. And he led me towards the hills and the breaking of day in the lone east. A very happy, healthy and peaceful new year to each one of you. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with God, Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord of all hopefulness, we bring to you the needs of our world as one year ends and a new year begins. We pray for the people of this parish and for those who join us week by week from communities far apart. We pray that all may know your comforting presence among us. Lord of new beginnings, hear our prayer. We pray for those in our community who help and care for others, for our school and for both secondary schools just outside the parish, for the medical centres and care homes, that they may be sustained over the next few months as they look after all who have been entrusted to them. Lord of new beginnings, hear our prayer. Lord of all hopefulness, we pray for all who are starting this new year out of work and who are seeking a new start or a fresh chance. We pray for our economy and for all those whose needs have not yet been met. Lord of new beginnings, hear our prayer. We pray for your heart of justice and equality to be realised in this coming year, in the opportunities we have to change the, those systems which are not working in people's best interests. Lord of new beginnings, 
hear our prayer. Lord of all hopefulness, we pray for our environment and climate as we end a year where climate change has brought out of control fires, storms and drought. And yet a change in human behaviour has seen lower carbon emissions and a flourishing of wildlife. Lord of new beginnings, hear our prayer. We pray for a sense of urgency in us and a desire to deny those habits which have seen us harm your creation and for the energy to see through changes that are beneficial to all life. Lord of new beginnings, hear our prayer. Lord of all hopefulness, we bring before you all who are lonely, sick or overwhelmed, and we give thanks for all who have worked to provide, test and administer the vaccines that have given us hope. We pray for all our healthcare and essential workers and give thanks for all their hard work in looking after those in their care. Lord of new beginnings, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, for all our hopes and dreams, for all our cares and worries, for, this, for the ability to love ourselves as you do. Lord of new beginnings, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who walk into this new year alone or without a loved one. And we ask you, Lord, to be with them and for them to know that you walk with them. Lord of all hopefulness, hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers as one, we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord of all hopefulness and new beginnings, you choose to dwell among us in our messy and broken lives. Help us to know your presence among us still, to enable us to reflect your light into every part of our community that we may be strengthened by your love and filled with your hope and perseverance at the start of this new year. Amen.
From In Memoriam by Alfred Tennyson. Ring out wild bells to the wild sky, the flying cloud, the frosty light. The year is dying in the night. Ring out wild bells and let him die. Ring out the old, ring in the new, ring happy bells across the snow. The year is going, let him go. Ring out the false, ring in the true. Ring out the grief that saps the mind for those that here we see no more. Ring out the feud of rich and poor. Ring in redress to all mankind. Ring out a slowly dying cause and ancient forms of party strife. Ring in the nobler modes of life with sweeter manners, purer laws. Ring out the want, the care, the sin, the faithless coldness of the times. Ring out, ring out my mournful rhymes, but ring the fuller minstrel in. Ring out false pride in place and blood, the civic slander and the spite. Ring in the love of truth and right, Ring in the common love of good. Ring out old shapes of foul disease. Ring out the narrowing lust of gold. Ring out the thousand wars of old. Ring in the thousand years of peace. Ring in the valiant man and free. The larger heart, the kindlier hand. Ring out the darkness of the land. Ring in the Christ that is to be. As we start this new year, may you know the comforting faithfulness of God the Father. May you feel the constant companionship of Christ our Lord. And may you hear the encouragement of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest among you and all those for whom you pray at the end of this year and into the next. Amen. Thank you to Tom, to Judy, to Kieran, and to Anne for their contributions to this service and also uh, to Cara who had the idea um, that I borrowed. Because we have now moved into level four, uh, it's been decided that it's probably, although we could, we can worship in church, it's probably not safe to do so and therefore we're going to go back to worshipping online I'll record the services here um, for the next couple of weeks at least but it does mean that my final service which was on January which is on January the 10th will be online and not in church so I'm not going to be able to meet any of you um, to stay behind, to, to share a glass of wine with you. Um, it's not the way I want to say goodbye, but I'm afraid it is the way uh, it is at the moment. And so we just have to keep one another safe. If any of you would like to contribute to my final service in any way, then please do let me know. If you'd like to say something, if you'd like to read something, you'd be more than welcome. Um, I shall be putting it together from the middle of next week. So uh, just let me know if you'd like to contribute. God bless you all. Have a wonderful and a happy, healthy and peaceful new year.
In my thank yous at the end of the service, I actually forgot to mention Jenny and Peter Lister, who did such a wonderful job of the Psalms. I do apologise. It was very cold in church and then suddenly the heating came on and that sort of totally threw me when suddenly this noise appeared. Um, once again, God bless you all and Happy New Year.